For 2,000 years, people have gathered together to worship in almost every corner of the earth. Love it, hate it, or have no opinion, most of us will have been to one. Set in the heart of every community in the UK, this is The Church. My name's Governor B. I'm a rapper, author, and broadcaster. I'm also a Christian. Many people think that Christianity is boring, untrue, and irrelevant. But I'm going on a journey around the UK to discover whether there are stories where the church, Christianity, and faith are making a difference in people's lives. I'm taking my mate Josh, and we're planning to have a lot of fun on the way. As we ask, is God dead? This week, we're in London to find out if the church is still relevant in 21st century Britain. What's happening? Good to see you, bro. Welcome right. to London. Thank Mate, you. And I'm excited to be in London. So I'm going to take Josh to some of my favourite places. And just because I know he loves heights, we're starting at the Emirates Airline a one kilometre cable car trip across the Thames, taking us hundreds of feet above the choppy waters below. This is it. You ready? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, you can't be doing that. I'm not even joking. <laughs> We're talking about church in this episode. I work for church, you're involved with church. Writing music. <laughs> yeah. One of my favourite songs of yours, Safe Place. Talks a little bit about some of the, the good, the bad, the ugly, to quote one of your lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's, what's the deal with churches? What, what's been your experience? Well, my family grew up going to church, and so I went to church from a very young age, and it just seemed like really perfect, mm. I think, when you're young. Um, sometimes in church, people can let you down, and because you expect them to be a representation of Jesus, who is perfect, mm. Whenever that happens, you're really disappointed, um, and I was. And I think I just realised that church is just full of imperfect people, just like the world is, and so people are going to make mistakes, but it doesn't take away from the fact that actually it does a lot of good. Most of my, most of my mates think that church is old, cold, irrelevant, pews, guys in robes. Your experience, has that been different? Yeah, man. I think your friends just think, you know, because you're old, and <laughs> no, I'm joking. I think the beautiful thing about church is there's so many different types, you know. For example, the church that I go to, you know, jumping up and down, like a bit more vibey and that kind of stuff. But yeah, there's not one type, there's loads. And I think it's important for people to explore what's right for them. And I think ultimately as well, people just want to be like loved and cared for and accepted. And so if we break it right down and stop thinking about like church, like the institution and we just think about church as me and you you know and the people all around us i think it becomes a bit easier like mm. i'm just going to love you as my brother and yeah, nice. someone else as my sister and that kind of stuff i think it makes it a lot easier to comprehend yeah but ultimately i love the church and i've seen it do great things man it's mm, good mate i'm quite impressed you've survived the trip mate how do you feel <laughs> i feel good i feel good <laughs> I feel good. Lewis, our camera guy, has just wet himself. I feel even happier to be getting off this place now, I tell you. Oh my days. This kid. Sorry, so mate. So I won't do that to you again. You know what the crazy thing is? We're just getting started! <laughs> We're making a quick stop on our way to Hackney, partly because I'm having too much fun trying to scare Josh. So, my brother? Yes. I'm sure you've heard that one of the things London is famous for is it sites? Yes. You've probably heard of Big Ben? I have. London Eye? London Eye, yes. St Paul's Cathedral? I even have, yes. Uh, but I'm going to take you to the number one site. Here we are. It West is uh, the West Ham United West Football Ham United. Stadium. I thought this place was famous for the Olympics. Well, it's famous for being home to one of the greatest clubs. Home of the Irons. In world football. The Ready? Irons. Oh, I'm forever blowing bubbles! <laughs> no, I'm joking, man. He's not with me. All right, so just before, we go to a game. Yeah. I'm going to take you on a little ride. Bro, my heart rate's only just come back, come back down from that. Heart rate's come back down? Yeah. But now it's time to bring your heart rate back up. Easy, yeah. Let's take, a, 
Do a little step and feast your eyes on this. Oh, blimey. Get all the way, all the way to the top and go down that little slide on the edge that you slide. can see coiled around. Yeah, it's a big slide. But it's like no slide that you've been on before. Just less than two miles from Hackney and built in 2012 for the London Olympics, the Arcel Orbital, or East London Slide as I like to call it, stands 114 metres high. Just right for someone who doesn't like heights. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> We're cycling through East London to get to St Church, which was built 230 years ago in 1792 and is one of Hackney's most prominent landmarks. Five years ago, a new vicar came with a team of people and a vision to refurbish the building and make the place fit for worship. We're meeting Mel, who is head gardener at St Church's five sites in East London. Over the past five years, Mel has been working to get local people involved in replanting and caring for these gardens right in the heart of the city. Connection and community is a word that I've heard a lot while being at Saints Church and it's cool to see how what you do is connected with the other parts of the church. How does it kind of all work together in like this holistic picture? Yeah. So as you've seen, we've got the brewery, we've got the garden. So there's just like different touch points where it's like our space is used to gather people together. Mm. Um, and the great thing with the garden is like we grow the flowers that then the bees can eat from and, mm. and produce honey. So it's kind of like using our space to just create something that, yeah, just has that kind of overall ability to, to produce something for other people, whether that's the flowers, the vegetables, the fruit from the orchard and then the bees making the honey. Um, yeah, that's just like a really exciting picture of what it is to be like, yeah, connected both spiritually, but also through the land and what we produce. Amazing. Thank you for your contribution. I feel like so often I take nature for granted and I'll just walk through a park and just not realize, you know, there's right. work and effort that's gone into making it look as beautiful as it does. And that like, collaboration with like your efforts to like, the way God's created the earth and stuff. So yeah, man, uh, very, very much inspired by you. Keep up the great work. Yeah, thank you. We've heard about the connection between the garden and the bees. So Josh and I are headed to the roof of St. Church to meet Eric, the head beekeeper. I, guys, on the real, we can't shoot this till I know I'm safe, man. He ain't even got no gloves on. Yeah, he's on the And you guys scared. It's not their job to be scared. Huh? <laughs> but your hands aren't covered, you could get stung, you know? Yeah, cameras are on, so we've got to pretend we're not scared. They don't call me Governor B for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> why, do, why are they creating Governor B then? Governor B. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, mate, keep up. <laughs> hello, Eric. Eric, hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. You, you, you didn't listen to any of the instructions Sat gave you uh, because no, nearly all of you are wearing shorts. Yes. So you were given strict instructions to wear long trousers, socks and boots. That's absolutely ah. right. That was a long one. So, yeah, so that's the first thing. The second thing is, who's wearing perfume? Not me. Or Alex. Short. I yeah. am wearing, I say, it was sprayed on the back of my neck. Right, there you go. So, so you didn't listen to the second instruction. <laughs> it turns out that meeting the bees is more precarious than we thought. And Eric isn't happy with us. Okay. We can wipe the after safe off the back of the neck. That was my fault. Oh, you did that? Yeah. Okay, right. well, so you can't you better go up without a suit then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, right, we've got a problem there because I've only got four suits. So right, I'll sit out and then those guys can go. <laughs> You're a presenter, yeah? yeah? Yeah, but I can present from here. I could do that behind Our director, you. Alex, is stepping in to try and convince Eric that we're okay to go up to the roof despite not having enough suits. As you can see, Alex pulled the short straw with his outfit. <laughs> You're going to be too Eric! Eric! You're going to be too Eric! There's a hole. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's why I should wear trousers. How many times have you been stung out of interest? Um, I, I, I forget. What? With the suit on? Yeah, they can sting you from the suit. What, bro? You didn't tell me that before I put it on, man. <laughs> Come on. Oh, have you been stung before? Yeah, by a wasp. Never a bee. What happened? Uh, Did you swell up? Yeah, I swelled up a little bit. Right. And then what? 
Then really I went on YouTube and I watched 30,000 bees fight 30 hornets and the hornets won. <laughs> okay, so there's three things that are gonna happen if you get stung, all right? This is serious, okay? One is nothing apart from you're gonna feel pain, okay? And you're gonna get minor swelling. And then the second thing is you might have a reaction to it. That might mean you, you swell up for 24 hours, okay? I'll so go the work third tomorrow. Option, and this is serious, is you, you might die. Bro, don't say that, <laughs> man. <laughs> Why have you got to say that before I go to see bees? <laughs> How'd you put this hat on, bro? It's, not, it's, not, it's all right, there's no bees down here. No, keep, keep the hat off. There's no bees down oh, here. Okay, Should we go? Why do you look so happy? <laughs> he loves his bees. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any sort of agenda? No. The main agenda is to get us out of here alive. Is it true that when a bee stings you, that a bee will sadly pass away? It will. That's, that's quite sad, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Is the, queen, is the queen bee at home at the moment? Yeah, she's always at home. Oh, no, oh she doesn't the leave? Queen bee, you don't touch her. You, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, we can. She's just a bee. OK. But is she she's like, a... always the biggest and the fattest bee? Yes. Oh, my gosh, <laughs> blood. Can you see how many? Oh, yeah. my days. He's just gassing them all out. <laughs> what? Oh, he's got his... Where's no, I'm just saying hello to them, that's all. Okay. Put your helmet on, man. Eric, I'm trying to look out for you, my bro. Thank you. No worries. There you go. But I want you to stand right. close. Okay. I'm not having this sort of, I'm going to hide at the back of the class thing, OK? It's all good. All right. And, and after a couple of minutes, you'll feel comfortable. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, that's a real honeycomb. This is all honey. Edible. Mad. OK. Oh, my days. Oh, big. my gosh. Whoa. Hello. There's so many of them. Do you know where the mother bee is going to be? <laughs> What's <laughs> the queen bee? Isaac. Isaac. Come, you come here. One of them's on my head. <laughs> I can see it, bro. Come here. <laughs> Gummy, you're fine. It's me. Josh, get him. Uh, get him over it's here. It's all good. He just needs a second. <laughs> you've got to chill out, bro. You're going to scare the bees. They're going to hurt you. Oh, one of them was on my neck, bro. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, maybe the queen bee's not in today. She is. What are we looking for when we look for the queen? Well, is it obvious? To, yes, because to help... I know what Eric is saying um, is probably interesting, have, um, but I'm just worried about this hole in my suit and where I'm to going to get stung. Well, stop touching me, huh? <laughs> so, you see, w when you're in the eye of a storm, um, you might as well be calm. Yeah, it's true. And then yeah, you realise, actually, that the storm isn't that bad. Yeah. That is a fantastic analogy. Yeah. That's honey there. Look, there's honey, OK? Oh, yeah, that's... That's delicious. honey. So this here, these little digestive biscuits, under there are bees. Oh, is that like Biscoff? Mad. Eric, I love you so much, my bro, but... I think I've done my time. Come on, let's find the queen and then we'll go. The queen, but I, the queen's not here, fam. She is. The queen's probably popped to the shards she's for a little, a little The wonder. flag is up and she's in the house. Painting. <laughs> uh, You're going to stress them out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got to go, I've got to go. Sorry. I've got to go. Is it all right, Eric? Eric, sorry, man. You've done an amazing job. Governor, you'll look back at this and regret that you didn't stick it out. I know, but there's so many. It's Eric, I love you. Thank you so much for this opportunity. It's a pleasure, Isaac. If you find the Queen Bee, I'll pop back out quickly. Yeah, right. But for now, I'll let you know. I'm going to tap out. I huh? feel quite at home with these guys. Well, they, they keep making a noise, and they're trying to tell me that the noise is wings flapping. But I appreciate that they do great stuff for the environment, and I love that. But I don't have to witness. The church produces honey, which is sold locally. And as scared as Josh might be right now, I think the bees are a picture of the church. Something beautiful being produced out of something local. That's how it should be. People working together to draw out all the local flavours, benefiting everyone in the neighbourhood. Hey, Gov. Yeah. Eric just got stung. Did he? Yeah. He didn't ask me, yeah. Have but a great he's time. chill. <laughs> he's so chill. Eric, are you OK? <laughs> yeah. He got stung. I'm definitely not going to. Keep rolling, 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 rolling. Yo! <laughs> How you doing, man? You all right? I'm good. How are the bees? It was good. Governor B just oh, met stop. some more bees. <laughs> um, no, nah, it was good, man. Um, obviously very nerve-wracking. Yeah. But I think I handled it like a bit of a G. Mm -hmm. Can't say the same for Josh, but it's another story <laughs> for another day. How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. I'm excited for you to see a little bit about what goes on here, about what it's like doing church here. Naomi is taking me to see the St. Church Lighthouse project that provides free meals to anyone who needs one. 
Well, I'd love to introduce you to two of our amazing volunteers in Chrissy and Bola. Hi, nice Hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you too, man. I was a bit late for the food, oh. unfortunately. What did you cook today? Today was a Greek stew with feta and couscous. Oh my I missed a good one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <next> <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about um, what Lighthouse so, does. Lighthouse is Acne Church outreach project to the people of East London where we provide hot meals to the vulnerable. Hot meals? Yes. Wow. To the vulnerable people in the community. Yeah, that's amazing. Obviously, over the last year, we've seen a pandemic that's affected a lot of people. Did you see the need for something like Lighthouse <laughs> increase? Uh, quite a big deal. Yeah, massively, yeah. <laughs> massively. I we think. have a lot more people coming down before the pandemic. Wow. And how did you deal with the demand? Was that quite tough or...? Yeah, there was a massive increase and I think we've shifted and changed a lot in that time. I think we were at, was it 5,000 meals? Yeah. And now we're at 400,000 meals oh since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, so yeah, so there's you've been provided 400,000 meals? We have. Wow. Yep. Madness. That's incredible. <laughs> you guys are amazing. <laughs> you are amazing. And is it genuinely for everyone? Like anyone can rock up and yes. get fed? Anyone. anyone can come. Vulnerable, marginalized people, anybody. We've, yeah. we've seen people come in and they're not even vulnerable. They just want to have the meal. So anybody's come. welcome. I mean, that makes so much sense, right? Like we talk about like having like an epidemic of loneliness. So you can almost understand that that you're not just providing a physical need, but you're meeting a social one as well. Well, yeah. thank you so much, thank guys. You. It's been so thank helpful you. to talk to you and so interesting. Lovely to meet you. Nice to meet you, Sam. Cheers. And what day is fish and chips? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe they've served 400,000 meals over the last year. I'm meeting Cy Nichols, who is one of the vicars at St. Church, to hear more about their work in the community. So I've just been to see Lighthouse. Yeah. Um, been to the church, walked around a little bit. Yeah. You're doing some amazing stuff. S remarkable things. Remarkable things happening, yeah. I guess my overarching question is why? Well, I think right at the heart of the good news of Jesus, uh, right at the message of the whole Bible is that God cares for the poor and that we who follow him should care for the poor too. You now we're in a garden, essentially, with a a little playground in it, which is great. Yeah. Um, you feed people, yeah. which is great. There's also artists that have concerts in your building, which is yeah. great. And it's all good stuff, but what does it do at the heart of it? Um, what's behind it? How does it transform the community, all of those things? And for me, that's what it boils down to, is that the whole of life is worship. Worship is more than just our songs. Songs are great to do it together, but as we are um, scattered, we're sent out as a people, we live lives of worship and, and for many people we are the only bible they're ever going to read what what story does my life tell to my neighbors to the guy over the road from me who can't really walk properly and so i i can help him cross the road or to the woman down the road who whose husband beat her up and she's been kicked out and actually what she really needs is some food or to the kid who's lost his dad and uh, needs, needs a father figure in his life. Well, we can do all of those things. It, it matters. Like I say, growing up in East London, I realised how much gentrification has hurt the local community. Mm. And a lot of people that work here aren't from London. How do you go about becoming culturally competent and building relationships with, with the local community? Yeah, massive, massive question. As, as a, a white British man living where I live, I'm, I'm in the minority, which I love. I love the diversity of our community. I love that my boy is growing up in a, a school that is deeply diverse, both in terms of cultural heritage and religious backgrounds. Um, and I love that. I love the multi-flavoured thing, particularly in, in East London. My job as a, as a leader is to raise up people who can speak into those communities in the language in which those communities speak. My job is not to do all the talking, not to do all the leading, it's actually to raise up other people. I think as a priest, my main job is to release people into the things they're called to do. I spoke to Chrissy and Bola, and they said that you had provided 400,000 meals yeah. this year alone. How do you go about funding that? So some of it is generosity from the church, some of it is generosity from other organisations, but we're also developing social enterprises. 
So uh, one of which is the brewery, uh, Hackney Church Brew Co, which uh, the proceeds from that, the, the profits from that actually fund a lot of what we're doing uh, with uh, the Lighthouse project, yeah. That's amazing and I'm so happy that you fed 400,000 people um, and the brewery's helping to fund that. Yeah. But all I just heard was beer, so yeah. can we go and try some? Absolutely, let's go. <laughs> It's actually amazing beer as well. Oh, is it? Have you ever had any? <laughs> no, I haven't. You should definitely go and get a beer. There's some amazing food there too. Finally, we're off to Hackney Church Bruco to sample some of the local beers. It's tough work, but someone's got to do it. Fresh from his trauma with the bees, Josh has finally calmed down enough to join us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> my ring, my ring literally looked like a bee in that moment. <laughs> Genuinely, I promise you. That's how scared I am. <laughs> it's cool, like, even like with my old uni mates and stuff. Yeah. They normally think, ah, oh, you go to church, you probably don't have a beer. Yeah. But actually, no, you go to church and you've got your own brewery. Yeah. You know what I mean? Every time I come in here, there are always like young kids like getting apprentice, like learning how to like work these spaces. I think all of like, whether it's the brewery, whether it's a bakery or a coffee place, it's all hospitality, right? Like it's all serving people. And so I think as long as we keep being intentional about inviting people into these spaces, it, it's weird, it can almost become like one of the few places where everyone really can be. And I would say that as a church, that feels like something we're super intentional about. Do you feel like we deserve a drink now? I see Ryan walking with a tray. You're about oh to get hooked up. Things we gosh. like to see. Three of us and more than three glasses. <laughs> <laughs> really good. I have for you some of our very favorites. So very Amazing. citrusy, easy going, full body. Thank you. Cheers to Lazy Sundays. <laughs> Cheers. That, that is beautiful, man. The next one up. Round two. Mare good. Street Mosaic. Wait, Hackney is such a mosaic of different cultures, and Love so that. that's where the name comes from. Smell it. Smell it. <laughs> all right. So this this one's all about smell it first. It smells. Oh, what do you smell yeah. like? I'm smelling like a bit of apricot, maybe. That taste is divine. Unreal. You should be able to transfer between the lager to that pale ale, like. I'll transfer this. between anything and everything. Right? <laughs> He's like I've never heard of anything like this attached yeah. to a church, so I think providing like environments where people can feel included and really comfortable yeah, to have, you know, conversations light or deep is really important. So yeah. big ups, I'm a fan. Yeah. And I think like, I think it's so easy for us to forget as Christians, like churches can be really intense spaces to walk into. Mm -hmm. And so like knowing that you can bring like your non-Christian friends to a brewery and just like, just have space to chat. All right, so now, have you it's ever had a sour beer? So. Give it a smell. You can already smell. Bizarre. Smell, yeah. smell, smell there bizarre. it goes. I'm like now intrigued. Go for it. <laughs> I don't feel like that's sour at all. Yeah. This is the best one. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Really good. You're a beautiful man, you know that. <laughs> it just, it just... You know when you were younger, you went to school and you had those like those sweets, but like it left this like really strange sour sweets. Thing. Yeah, yeah, like really sour sweets. Yeah. It I tastes mean, like one of them. Yeah, that one. Which one's most that one hit hard. Uh, if Guinness were an adult that was like a million years old, yeah, that I'm would like, be. I'm like, as scared as I have excited. All right, it's called Rich. Heaven Help Me. So this Heaven one. Heaven Help Me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, none of that, mate. <laughs> Cheers. That's like nothing I've ever tasted before. This is something I would sip over a period. of Hundred percent. That's yeah, you know this. It's a little sip sipper. You get me? Say it. Go ahead. Say End of the night. Sipper. Sipper. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Damn. Listen. Thank you so much for this. Yeah, I've had the time of my life, mm. and it's been amazing seeing what Hackney Church do. I'm in such a good mood. Good, uh, of course. Why I'm not? gonna grab a drink for every single one of the crew, because I know they're oh. really jealous right now. <laughs> <laughs> so put your cameras down and come get a drink. <laughs> right. I can't help but think that the church is an organization that is flawed, broken, and has made many mistakes. But that's because the church is made up of messy and broken people. What I've seen today at St. Church is a picture of how many churches across the UK are creative, community focused, caring for the poor, and opening their doors in new ways for people to come in and give it a go.